So hi everyone, welcome. My name is Alison Bachmeyer and we're going to spend some time learning about body talk together for these next few days. So I'm really excited to share with you my body talk story. So how this began for me was actually back when I was in second year med school. I came down with a form of cancer called Hodgkin's disease. Now if you had to get a cancer, this is on the top five list for sure. It's a good cancer to get, meaning it's very treatable and chemotherapy and radiation get pretty good results. Having said that, it's still cancer and I was in my early 20s and I was pretty concerned about that. So I, in the middle of chemotherapy, started to come down with these migraine headaches, which I had had for years as a stressed out medical school student and had treated very effectively with chiropractic and massage, but that had to happen pretty regularly to get any real results. So. I mentioned this to my cancer doctors and they said, no, you can't go for a massage, you can't go for chiro either. That's going to maybe spread the cancer along the lymph system because Hodgkin's is a cancer that affects the lymph system. So that's actually really bad science, but that's another story. We can debate that later. What that meant though was in the middle of chemotherapy when I had been feeling pretty miserable. So you know all those stereotypes that are out there in the movies and the books about chemo patients. They're all really true. So I couldn't go from uh, climbing a flight of stairs from top to bottom without having taking a break in the middle to rest. And I had formerly been a very active aerobics instructor. So there was certainly something there that had transpired that was pretty detrimental to my well-being in many ways. So I also had symptoms that were um, stirring up the stomach and the digestive system and made eating really quite difficult. I had ulcers all the way throughout. It physically hurt to be touched. I had bone pain and I had hair loss, but I just thinned. I didn't actually lose it all. I think that's because I took one look at the wig department and I said, no, no thank you, I'm not going there, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. So here I was, pretty desperate, and then getting migraines on top of everything. So that wasn't working very well for me. So I decided to do something a little different, and I picked up a magazine called Whole Life. Have you guys heard of Whole Life here in Saskatchewan? Yes. No? I flipped through that, and it's basically Saskatchewan's alternative um, healthcare magazine. So we've got lots of copies off to the side. You're welcome to take a gander. And as I flipped through that, I found something called craniosacral massage. Now, I didn't really know what that was. It sounded good. Craniosacral, nowhere near the cancer areas. So I thought, let's do this. Let's give this lady a call. So I did. Now, she took one minute to hear my story and she interrupted me and she said, no, I hear what you're saying. I know what you're here for, but this is not what you need. You need body talk. Mm -hmm. And I thought, who turns down business? Nobody turns down business. That's pretty wild. So I called up the body talk lady and I kept that poor woman on the phone asking every skeptical question I could about body talk and energy medicine for about half an hour. Now I was open-minded for especially considering I was coming from this medical Western science background. I had been doing massage in Cairo, which even in those days was pretty revolutionary. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I would, you know, go for this body talk experience simply because I was desperate and I really had nothing to lose at this point. So I show off my appointment. Now she tells me to lay down on this massage table and she goes silent for 45 minutes. She doesn't say a word. So here I am wondering what the heck is going on. At the end of it, she says, you're going to have some work done on your ovary. This is what we're working with today. We're gonna to do some cellular repair work, in fact, on your left ovary. And I thought, this lady's lost her mind. How on earth can this relate to what it is I've got going on? Well, as you find out later on in Body Talk, all the different body parts, they have a job or a consciousness, so to speak. So every single body part functions in a way to serve us. So what's the psychology of this? Now, imagine what the ovary does for a living. What does it do? It produces hormones. Yeah, it produces hormones and? Eggs. Eggs. And what do eggs give us? Life. 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 <laughs> yeah. So perhaps the giving of life, that willpower to survive life, is actually pretty relevant to somebody going through cancer. 
Yeah, so it doesn't seem at first glance like this could be an issue that would be of any value. I really thought this lady was crazy because I wasn't even interested in having children. Never mind having this be a priority for my body to address while I was feeling miserable through chemotherapy. When I found out later on that this was all about that will to survive, that made a lot more sense to me. Now, I didn't know that at the time, so I walked out thinking, I'm never coming back. This is not for me. Thank you, but no thank you. Now, something interesting happened. Over the next few days, I started to feel better, and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. I had done a whole lot of other natural therapies, everything from osteopathy to uh, I worked with Chinese medicine to meditation to visualization. I did an awful lot. So I couldn't figure out really what was new. And when I looked back and what I had tried different, it was body talk. And I thought, how on earth can that work? So I explained it as being a placebo effect. Now, placebo effects apparently only work if you aren't really aware of that fact that they're a placebo effect, but I ignored that fact altogether, and I called it a placebo effect, and I signed up for another session. Same thing happened. Uh, there was a lot of silence, and she didn't say much. At the end, she said a few things. None of it made any sense to me, and at the end of it, I felt better, and I couldn't figure out what that was all about. And it drove me absolutely crazy. I had a degree in anatomy, I had a degree in psychology, and here I was halfway through medical school, and yet some lady with a few days of training was tapping here, tapping here, and getting these results that made me feel better in a way that I actually hadn't felt for years, really. So you know that sense of just well-being and vitality that you have? You know it when it's missing for sure. Mm -hmm. That had been lacking for me for quite some time. So this was a whole new, I don't actually know if I had actually really felt that in a way. So this was a whole new exploration of what really my body could feel like and how healthy I really could be. So I continued to go back for my placebo treatments and uh, they continued to work. And then I got really pissed off. So thought there's no way that this can work. I have all this understanding of the body and mind. How on earth is this possible? So I needed to have some rational, logical proof. So I said, okay, if I can get some actual proof that this is doing what I think it's doing, then I'm going to go study it. And I'm going to learn all about it and I'll integrate it into my Western medicine practice. So I did. I got exactly what I asked for, in fact. I had a few things happen. Now, one was I was in the middle of having a discussion with my loved one, my boyfriend. I'm sure none of you have had discussions, right? Okay. <laughs> so we were having this discussion about who should move for who. And I thought he should come to Saskatoon because that was where the only med school was. And he was a teacher up north and I figured he could teach anywhere, right? Right? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay, good. I like yeah. that you're all on the same page with me. <laughs> yes. Very good validation. Well done. Okay. Yeah. So here I was thinking this, and very stubbornly so, and so in all of our discussions, I wasn't listening. Now, right around the same time frame, I came down with a nasty ear infection. And I got them frequently. I made my living at the time by teaching swimming lessons. So I was in the pool a lot, and I had some left eardrum issues. So. I got ear infections about every three months or so. This was a pretty normal event, but antibiotics cleared it right up, right. except for this time. So two courses of antibiotics, two weeks of this nagging ear infection, and it wasn't going anywhere. So I show up for my body talk session, I mentioned this ear thing, and at the end of the session, she says, so you've got some issues uh, with your partner, which she did not know I was in a relationship. And they were all around this theme of who was willing to sacrifice their life for who. So she couldn't have known that. <laughs> there was no way. Oh, so that's what I love about it. <laughs> it was fascinating to yeah. me as well because I understood you were supposed to ask your patients, you know, how they were feeling and, you know, look at the mental emotional considerations on their physical health. Mm -hmm. But I never truly understood that one could impact the other in such a dynamic way. So that boggles my mind a lot. And yet, that day after the session, I went back home, had a nice discussion, not a discussion, with my loved one, 
and we decided that he would come here to Saskatoon for me. So that's pretty interesting. Even more interesting is within 24 hours of that conversation, after listening and hearing each other's signs, my ear infection cleared up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, so fast forward a few months, we move in together and we've got this fabulous house. It is two blocks away from university. It's in a really great neighborhood. The only thing is we've got this upstairs, the people downstairs are renting and they have a cat. So they're not supposed to have a cat, but they do. And I'm allergic to all animals. Cats are the absolute worst for me at this time. So I go for a body talk session and she lays me down on the table and says some things about not honoring my feminine and not honoring my nurturing spirit, which was pretty true, I must say. So keep in mind, at that point in my life, I was not interested in having children. I was never going to get married. And if I was going to have children, mm, he would have to stay home and take care of them. Because mm -hmm. I was going to go be the breadwinner, and that's just the way it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, right? Yeah. So no issues with the feminine nurturing whatsoever, as you can clearly mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So she tells me this, I don't really know what that means because I've never thought about my feminine, not once ever, and nor have I thought about my nurturing side, not once ever. Interesting, given that I'm stepping into a career of healthcare, that I had ignored both of those aspects pretty strongly in my life. So she highlights these issues. I go over to my friend's house who has six cats. She was a bit of a cat lady at the time. She's moved on to having children, don't worry, she's got a few kiddos running around. Now, maybe the problems transpired from cats <laughs> to kids, I'm not quite sure, but everything seems okay for her so far. Yeah. So, I'm infecting myself with cats. I'm petting the cat, I'm touching my face, I'm trying to elicit some sort of reaction. I don't get one single wheeze, I don't get one single hive, I'm not itching, I can breathe, there's no snot running down my face, I'm not sneezing, there's no congestion in my head or my sinuses anywhere. So that was revolutionary. I went back home and I didn't have one single symptom from being around this cat. Mm. Yeah. So pretty astonishing that that went like that. Interesting, at the time my mom had just gotten a dog to which I was also allergic to. We lived in different cities. So I traveled home several weeks later and I walked into this house and I was no longer allergic to her dog. So the thing with body talk is it's a lot like throwing a stone into the pond. The ripples will continue long afterwards. Right. Yeah. So not just the cat allergy got addressed, actually all my animal allergies went with it. Allergies tend to travel in packs. When you get rid of one, you tend to get rid of a lot of them. So the horses, the cows, the seasonal allergies had all completely transformed. So here I was enjoying this new lovely space and healing from the cancer and the doctor sent me for blood work. So I went off, I got my blood drawn and it came back that my thyroid hormones were crazy off the charts high. They were so high they actually couldn't measure them anymore. Meaning I was hypothyroid, meaning the function of the thyroid was kaput. Okay, so here I was not necessarily understanding why that was until the doctor said, well, you had this area radiated as part of your treatment. Mm -hmm. So that's going to impact the health of that area forevermore. That's just the way it's going to be. You're going to be on a medication called Synthroid for the rest of your life. And I said, okay. And I went to get my prescription filled. And as it was getting filled, I happened to get a body talk session. Didn't mention anything about the thyroid because there was nothing that could be done. And three days later, I still haven't taken any medication yet. I uh, go for more blood work. My family doctor wanted more blood work drawn. And she also repeated the thyroid test. Well, the thyroid came back from off the charts immeasurable to completely normal. Mm -hmm. Now that's pretty amazing. Western science says for a change in the thyroid hormone values to occur, it takes four to six weeks. Okay. So the kind of change we're talking about could take months to stabilize. Huh? So that was pretty phenomenal. So I'd clearly gotten my proof that it worked. It worked even when I didn't say what was going on and it worked even when I didn't understand why it was working. Right. Yeah, so I didn't have to be logically aware of what was happening for this to get really fantastic results. 
in fact, had I tried to analyze it and intellectualize it, the results probably wouldn't have been quite as good. So it got me out of my head and into my body for perhaps the first time really ever. Okay. So I got my proof. I went off to take a seminar, as I promised I would, and I took my Body Talk Fundamentals in Kelowna, BC. Now, that was a long time ago, uh, but I'll never forget walking out of that class and going, that's it, I'm done, I'm leaving medical school, and there's just no two bits, ands, or buts about it. I told my friends what I was going to do, and they said, look, write your very last set of finals, which was in three weeks. And I did, and then I actually even started my internship. So I was three weeks into my internship when I had a meltdown day. Have you guys ever had a meltdown day? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. in this meltdown day, I cried for about 24 hours straight. And at the end of it, I realized that I was miserable doing what I was doing, and I wanted another way. And I didn't know exactly what that looked like, but I knew that body talk felt good, and this did not feel good and it boiled down to simply that. Mm -hmm. I still didn't have any designs on becoming a body talk practitioner or becoming a body talk instructor. I just knew that I needed a break. Mm -hmm. So I went in to give my notice and say, that's it, I'm not returning, I'm done. And they said, look, take a year. Mm -hmm. You can use that year to take your time to heal and do what you need to do. I hadn't taken any time during chemo or radiation. I kept going through med school, through all of that. So I really did need a break. My body wasn't capable of standing on my feet for 80 hours a week, as well as studying for 30 hours on top of it in a fairly stressful environment. You know? mm -hmm. So I took my break, I took my year off, and thank goodness for that med student line of credit because I did every body talk course I could get my hands on at least once, twice, three times, some of them. You know? Which meant I flew all across North America to make that happen. So I really treated it like getting another degree which um, I'm really glad that I invested it in that time frame because it was really not so much about garnering the knowledge and getting another degree as it was self-healing. Mm -hmm. So I really took the courses a few times over all for me. I still had no designs on becoming a, <coughs> a practitioner for these first several months of training. <coughs> Excuse me. So I decide through all my studies that <coughs> that I'm quite in love with this and I really want to do a little bit more and I continue to uh, go on and become certified as a practitioner and wouldn't you know it but now I get to study quite a bit with Dr. John Belton who is the founder of Body Talk. Mm. <clears throat> and he keeps saying look if you're passionate about Body Talk if you really want to learn Body Talk well then you've got to study its foundation, which is the life sciences. So that's breakthrough, mindscape, and free fall. So I did. I jumped into all of them, and I studied them passionately, and I actually went on to become a breakthrough instructor and a free fall instructor. So right now I'm actually retired from breakthrough teaching. So I, these days I'm teaching body talk, free fall, as well as practicing with body talk and breakthrough. This is what I, I do for a living these days. I mean, if you told me that I would be doing this 10 years ago, I would have laughed a lot. I would have mocked the person I was am today. And so how many years have you been doing this? <clears throat> so I've been doing this for over 12 years now, and I've been teaching for well over 10 now. Mm -hmm. So this has been a lifelong drive to get me here. I just didn't know that this is where I was going to be. Right. I had no idea. But it's really the perfect intersection for me in terms of all my loves. So I love to study everything from psychology to philosophy to quantum physics to anatomy. And this is like the intermarriage of all of those. I don't think anything else out there gets to play with all of those factors and wrap them up into one fun ball. It also means I get to work in a way that I never get bored because every time I work with someone, it's completely new, it's completely different, and it's always an ongoing learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. which works well for me because I have one of those minds that needs that kind of stimulation and I quite enjoy learning. Mm -hmm. Lifelong mm -hmm. scholar for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So really how that came about was at the end of my year I gave my formal written notice saying that's it, I'm done, I'm not returning and that very same week I got accepted to become a instructor in body talk. So isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, life's little synchronicities work out pretty good that way.